Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you today. I look around this room and I know most of you by name and many of you I know your story and I, if I don't, I want to. I, I look forward to the opportunity to hear your story. Everyone has a story. I had someone tell me one time, I don't really have a story. <laughs> uh, you can pretend you don't have a story, but you have a story. Everybody has a story, and it might be really, really sordid, might be long, it might be a saga. It may seem simple to you, but to someone else. I'm going to preach a message on just being obedient to the Lord. And it crosses 180 with our flesh, doesn't it? I mean, our flesh is going this way and the Holy Spirit's moving us in the other way. So that's normal. So don't feel singled out in that. But I want to give honor to you today, those of you that come, you're faithful, you serve, and um, you give your love, your time. I know there are some in this room who have driven almost an hour to get here. So... I don't think you want us to cut short the times of refreshing, Amen. times of worship in order to accommodate the carnal man. I want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God, Amen. and I want us just to flow. We went last week, the, the worship and, and, and the glory... Um, Sean, I don't know, there may be a monitor on if you want to mute all the monitors, auxes or something, but I'm getting a, just a little roar up here in my section somewhere. Um, last week, we went for two solid hours of just praise and, and worship and prayer. And I, I abide by the scripture that says, this house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Amen? So if you're new here today, I know there are some here for the very first time. Welcome. Welcome. And what you just experienced in this time was a time of prayer. And it's biblical. It's not weird. You know, it, it, because it's weird to me doesn't mean it's weird. If it's strange or unusual to me doesn't mean it's not okay, right? The only thing we tend to or, or would wish to drive out from this room are, are bad spirits, not, not any people. We don't want anybody to, to leave. Um, we want spirits to leave. And, you, and if you've got spirits that need to leave, you stay and they will leave. But don't let them take you with them. Amen? Because Jesus is here, he loves you, and it's about love. It's all about love. I'm excited about next Sunday, our Pathways Lunch. And those of you that have signed up, we're already full, and we're taking sign-ups for the next Pathways Lunch. So uh, if you didn't get signed up, today would be a good day to sign up for the next one coming up in about eight weeks. That would be awesome. So we get a, a good start on that, and, and you don't miss that. I'm always excited to celebrate what God celebrates and count what God counts. 
Today we celebrate Bill and Barb Lettner, 50 years of marriage. And how about that? I, I ain't saying nothing. I, I ain't saying nothing. Bill Lettner is one of the first friends that I acquired coming into the state of Ohio. We were friends early on. We've worked together, ministered together, taught Bible studies together, sang on the platforms together, and... He's assisted me many, many times and served in a powerful way. Amen. So we're going to get to some scripture here in a moment, but I, I have some things written that I feel like the time uh, requires or demands that I share with you. Should I switch to a wireless microphone? Maybe. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Check one, two. Sometimes technical stuff can be a blessing and sometimes it can be in the way. But I've preached on a handheld microphone before and I can do it again. I, uh, every once in a while, I'll read um, something that's called Give Him 15 by Dutch Sheets, if you've ever heard of Dutch Sheets. He has a daily devotional called Give Him 15, and, and I read that occasionally. However, one day this week, I felt the Spirit prompting me to open and read Give Him 15. And you'll know why the Holy Spirit nudged me to do that, and you'll be glad I was obedient to do that as I share with you what the Lord gave me three weeks ago for today's message. But God's timing is always perfect, isn't it? And he's opened our hearts up for this today. So it's, this is how it works. Amen? Dutch Sheets is sharing a word from a man named Scott Reese. He says, concerning the move of God that's happening right now, that Simeon calls the Raspberry Revival, this is not just a personal revival. It is corporate. I am not only reviving hearts, I am restoring and repairing hearts worldwide strategies and structures that have the ability to, are you ready for it, sustain my glory. Now, you know, for some 20 years, we've been talking about a sustained move of God. And the way it can be sustained is when there's order and there's structure on which the glory can rest. Amen? His glory will rest, reside, and tabernacle with men where there is order and structure established. And this is what God has called us to do for the last 20 years. The new wineskin is mentioned in this same Give Him 15. The new wineskin is not flimsy. While the old wineskin is too rigid and can't flex to sustain the new wine, the new wine skin, 
while pliable and willing is also strong. If you want to be able to cooperate in this corporate move, you will be required to be connected to a living structure. We are lively stones building up a spiritual house. And this will not be a revival just of flimsy wineskins where anything goes. This will be a move of the purity and the holiness and the order of God. For 25 years now, we've been staring at structure in this house. We've been locking arms with apostles across the country and anointing and appointing elders and deacons to sustain the order that is required to support this return of Jesus. We've been discipling disciple makers. What we've experienced here from worshiping on hay bales in temperatures in the teens to building this facility on a shoestring of prayer, fasting, and God's words has brought us to a time of like a spiritual boot camp. Not everybody's tough enough to handle boot camp. Don't raise your hand if you went home from boot camp or got kicked out of boot camp. But a lot of Christians come into the walk with the Lord, and when they find out that part about dying daily, that part about many things you'll suffer for my name's sake, when they get to that part about many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all, they kind of want to find an easier path. You'll understand where I'm going with this in just a minute. But this move of God is a restoration of God's family unit. As the world sees this order come to the ecclesia, fathers will then assume their role again in the home. That's a revival. That's the movement of strategies and structures that will change the world. I now declare to you a spirit of adoption upon the earth. The heart of the fathers turning to the sons and the heart of the sons turning to the fathers. The father is calling by name and identifying his sons in the earth. So the other piece of this is a few years ago the Lord showed me the important difference between the two commissions that Jesus spoke into the earth. Almost every evangelical church that I've ever been associated with and acquainted with knows and speaks about the great commission, singular. But if you really study it, Matthew's account and Mark's account are actually two commissions, and you'll understand that when I share this with you. Mark's gospel said, go and preach the good news so humans can be delivered, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit, and become a part of God's family once again. In other words, he told them to be fruitful and multiply like he did Adam and Eve, the original commission. And we just come into that alignment. The second commission is the commission in Matthew that most people quote and slightly misinterpret or come just short of fulfilling when he said, go and make disciples of all nations. We're not just discipling 
individuals, but as a kingdom. Do you realize the, the flag you're flying behind? Do you realize the flag you're marching behind? It's the kingdom of God. Amen? I love seeing an American flag, but my flag, his banner over me, is love. I'm, I'm marching behind the captain of the host, and his name is Jesus, and he's never lost a battle. He's never pulled his army out and left people to struggle on their own. He's always with me. He's always beside me. He's always behind me. He is my victorious champion. But because we've watered down the commission to just getting people saved, quote, unquote, I had one man, I think it was Jim, told me the other night he's had the Holy Ghost 71 years. He said, now, I haven't been saved that long. Kind of tongue-in-cheek, he said, I've been saved ever since the last time I repented. That's good, isn't it? That's good. We are being saved from this generation. Amen. Being delivered every day. But the Great Commissions have a little bit of a contrast in how they work. One feeds off of the other. You can't have one without the other. You can't just pick and choose Scripture and say, oh, I like the Mark Commission so much better than the Matthew Commission. The Mark Commission seems a little easier. I think I'll go with that one. You ever been in a biblical debate with somebody and they say, well, I'll take what Jesus said over what Peter said any day. You ever heard anybody say stuff, silly stuff like that? Well, I'm just here to tell you, they agree. If you think you're putting, pitting Jesus against one of his apostles, you're confused. Peter wasn't confused. Jesus wasn't confused. You're confused. Amen? They don't, they don't contradict. You don't have to tr try to decide which one you like better, Paul or Mark or Matthew or Luke. Amen? They all agree. Go ahead and say amen again. So here's a contrast. In the commission for awakening in Mark 16, God brings his people into family. In the commission for reformation in Matthew 28, God teaches people his ways. Once you have been delivered and saved and healed and transformed, you're not done. You don't try to pick a pew that's your size and a parking lot that your car don't get scratched up in and somewhere where the tithes and offerings percentage fits into your budget. It's not over. You're not done. You're just getting started. You just got born again. I miss, I miss those times when Simeon was in our arms like Deacon Curtis over here and his grandbaby. I miss the, Soak up every minute, brother, because you'll miss those times. But wouldn't it be crazy if the whole church was just a bunch of babies in diapers no, 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 no. That's not what God intended to bring his kingdom into the earth was to grow us up, mature, make disciples. It comes from the word discipline. Everybody say, ouch. So here's the contrast. The awakening births them spiritually. Reformation trains them practically. Awakening changes the human heart. Reformation changes the human mind, the thinking. Awakening is an internal, takes place within us. Reformation is external. It's worked out from, through, and by us. Awakening is accomplished through preaching. Reformation takes place through teaching. 
Awakening produces converts. Reformation produces disciples. Awakening releases God's life. Reformation establishes his laws, his principles, and his ways. Awakening saves the individual. Reformation saves regions, nations. Awakening produces a family, a bride, and worshipers. Reformation produces an ecclesia, those who govern, manage, and steward. In most revivals, believers only think of getting people saved and born again. This revival is different. And that is essential. We've got to have a starting point. We've got to have a baptistry that can be filled up quick because people are getting baptized right and left, one right after the other. That's important. That's essential. It's the starting point. But if Matthew 28, the reforming and discipling of individuals and nations doesn't occur, the long-term, fr long-term fruit will be minimal and can even be lost. How many of you saw the movie this weekend of the Jesus Revolution? Is that the name of it? Jesus Revolution? A whole bunch of our, I think there were like 20 or 30 in the theater, in one theater at one time this week. <clears throat> and I'm told that it's about the Jesus movement, the Jesus outpouring in the 70s, which I'm old enough to remember. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I got you, Jed. Yeah, I'm with you. <clears throat> and I believe it was Dave who commented to us on a text thread about feeling like now in this era that you missed that movement in a sense because in that time we were so religious, we were trying to figure out what was wrong with it and how they, they had it all mixed up and it, it wasn't quite up to our par and our standards, and the next thing we know, they've moved on, and we're still in our religion. <clears throat> that movement, <clears throat> which included the, what we call the Jesus People Movement, saw tens of millions of people saved around the world. It was a wonderful, thank you, it was a wonderful example of Mark 16, the Great Commission of Getting People Saved. It occurred with great momentum and significant revival. However, there was very little understanding of our calling to do Matthew 28. The concept of discipling that existed at the time was limited to the discipling of individuals who came to Christ, not the discipling of nations, societies, and cultures. Sadly, during the Jesus movement or the charismatic movement of the 70s, Christians did Mark 16 only. While millions of people were being saved, humanists, secularists, and atheists were busy doing their version of Matthew 28. They were discipling a nation. We saved individuals. They discipled a nation. We preached the gospel. Unbelievers taught dogmas and doctrines. We went to church. They went to the schools, the universities. We gathered on weekends. They gathered all week. We enjoyed Christian TV. They made movies and programs, took over the music industry. We sang and worshiped at church. They took over the airwaves and discipled a generation with their music chock full of messages of rebellion, suicide, drug abuse, sex. Amen? Rebellion was rampant in their message. Humanism was poured into the minds and hearts. Self-worship was promoted in their discipleship. The result is we experienced one of the greatest revivals in history and lost our nation. 
to evil, deception, lies, alcohol, marijuana, drugs, and on and on and on. But God, but God, he said, okay, I got this for America. And he's stirring us up again, but this time we're wiser. This time we're one. This time it's happening in the universities, in the schools, in the hospitals, in government. This time we'll get it right. I won't miss it. You won't miss it. We will have one song, and we won't just sing it at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. We'll sing it at Monday at the school and at the job. Amen? Joe Rader, God has raised you up for such a time as this. While watching the news this week, I saw where Columbus Public Schools, that's where Joe works, the pu public school of Columbus, Ohio, 30 years ago, had 200 violent events per year in the entire system. Last year, they had 5,786 violent occurrences, almost 6,000 violent occurrences in the Columbus Public Schools reported. It's time for revival, reformation to take over we must arise. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I almost feel like we didn't quite make that. I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We won't back down. We won't be silent. We won't be censored. We won't be canceled. We have a right. We have the truth. We will make disciples of all nations. We will infiltrate the government with the power and the spirit and the presence of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. We got the what and the why. I'm going to give you the how. I don't want you to go home saying, what's he talking about? How am I going to do this? Amen? Amen. Now, there's all kinds of theories about how to build a church, how to have revival, how to have a move of God, how to let the presence of God move in your services, and on and on and on and on and on. But it is so simple. We flat out overlook and miss it so many times. God gave us this word 25 years ago. He's looking for simple obedience. It's really simple. It's as simple as a young group of ladies, single and married, obeying the Holy Spirit to go sit with an older lady who lost her husband on Valentine's Day. It's as simple as putting a $100 bill in somebody's hand or a $5 bill in somebody's. It's as simple as tipping double. It's as simple obedience of what did God say to do. A text. I don't like to text when I'm driving, but sometimes the Holy Spirit gives me a text when I'm driving. So I use that 
thing where you talk and text, and sometimes I just pull over. Amen? But I obeyed the Lord the other day and sent a text. And the friend that returned the text said, quote, unquote, coincidence. Not a coincidence. He was being facetious because it was God. The timing of God is always perfect. Obey that little nudge, that little voice, okay? Scott Wesley Brown used to sing a song, Lord, don't send me to Africa. I don't know if God ever sent him to Africa or not. But some of us, we sit around fearful that God's going to send us somewhere we don't want to go. <laughs> I highly doubt he wanted to go to that cross. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you've got to think about that. What in the world? Who do you think you are? Okay, I'll read scripture. Right. I want, it. I want me to preach. Okay. John 14, verse 15. This is easy to remember. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, that's a deal. That's a wheel of a deal. Wheel. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, you'll be abiding in my love. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love. That's a a love wheel you can't get off of. Just keep on abiding in his love. Keep on keeping his commandments and abiding in his love. And keep, why do people go visit somebody on Valentine's Day? Love. Why did they put money in somebody's hand? Love. Why did they cook a meal? And take it to someone who just had surgery? Love. Why did they do it? Love. Why are you here today? Love. And if you keep his commandments, you abide in his love. And if you love him, you keep his commandments. I love that. I just saw that. I'm excited because you all probably knew that forever. But I just found that. I just got that. I'm pumped now. I'm ready. Deuteronomy 4, verse 39. Deuteronomy 4, verse 39. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart. Now, this, what, he's, what he just said was, I really mean what I'm about to tell you, and I need you to pay attention and put it deep, deep, deep into your heart and mind. Amen? Know that the Lord, he is God in heaven above. And upon the earth beneath there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee. See, that, that message they were preaching in the 60s and 70s was it's my life, it's my body, I'll do what I want to do, I don't care, it's me, I am grown up, I am an adult, I'll do what I want to do and it won't affect anybody. That's a lie and deception. Y'all know what Jenga is? Them blocks are important. They're connected. 
And some of them blocks just pull out, pull out. But pretty soon, it's coming down. Isn't that right? Why? Because that one block moved, the whole thing crumbled. You're connected whether you like it or not. You're playing Jenga with every decision. You can gamble all you want to, but it's coming down. You can play around, monkey around. Oh, it don't hurt nobody. It's a safe drug. I talk like that because that's how you sound when you're talking <laughs> in rebellion. Josh, did you ever sound like that when you were growing up? He says he did. I wasn't copying you, I promise. I wasn't thinking about you. How many of you were rebellious at some point in your life? Now all the double-minded raise your hand. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We've all been there. We've all lived in rebellion. But God said, pay attention. Open up your heart. Listen to me. I'm not joking about this. I'm not playing any games. If you want it to be well with you, if you want to live in this earth a happy, good, well life and your children for it to be well with them, keep my commandments. It's easy if you do it hard. It's hard if you do it easy. He said, it'll be well with your children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, if your life's in a mess right now, I'm not condemning you. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or bad. God is the God of starting over. He's the God of a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth chance. Amen? He's a God that can take you right now today. His mercies are new every morning. Right now today you can start something that's never been done before in your lifetime that you have all kinds of these regrets, all kinds of problems, all kinds of history, all kinds of disobedience, all kinds of rebellion. And starting this moment today, February 26, 2023, you can keep his commandments starting now. So, oh, I don't know, Pastor. That's hard. That's a lot. Whew. I don't know about that, man. There's some, there's some commandments in there that, whoo, I don't think I could do that. Let me ask you something. Do you think God messed up when he made you? Do you think he, your mother had a baby and God went, oops, that one got by me? I went to the cross of Calvary and looked at everybody in history and in the future, but I missed that one. See, the devil will make you think like that. I mean, it sounds silly when I say it, but you think it all the time. Yeah, nobody understands me. Really? Really? You're going you're gonna to claim that one? That's what you're going to tell Jesus? The man that died on the cross, when you face him in judgment, you guys, is that what you're going to tell him? You know, Jesus, I would have lived for you, but nobody understood me. Hmm. I'm sure that's going to hold up, right? Had a teenage boy tell me one time, he said, I, my mother just so hard on me, I think she's driving me away from Jesus. I said, is that what you're going to tell Jesus? He didn't have a good answer for that. Amen? No, God didn't mess up when he made you. He didn't. The Ten Commandments are no harder for you than they are anybody else. And I can't live it. Pastor Tim can't live it. The best in here can't live it except for the blood and grace of God. 
And the same grace that enables me to live and obey his commandments is yours. That's the good news. It's free. It's yours. You don't need a gray jacket and brand new blue jeans. Just accept it. Where you are, who you are, how you are. I, I, I don't know who ever come up with the idea that people need to get all cleaned up and, and, and get some. As soon as I get some things in order, Pastor, I'm going to come to church and live for God. As soon as I get. What in the world? Who, who's preaching that message that you need to get good so you can find God? Now, there is nobody in here got good enough to find God. Whoever made you think that, they were really confusing you. We got you fooled. If you think we were good, you haven't been paying attention. I was a rotten, stinking, lying worm. Rebellious, smart aleck, snot-nosed kid. Amen? Full of sin and iniquity, nightmares and fear and tormenting thoughts and all kinds of crazy stuff going on in my life, but God. <laughs> Don't wait till you get good, because you know what? You will never make it. You will never get good. You will never have enough money. You'll never have enough time. You'll never have a good enough marriage, a good enough family, good enough kids. Amen? Amen? Well, I would come to church, but my kids just won't be still. That's why you need to come to church. <laughs> Duh. We'll help them be still. There is a generation, Proverbs 30, verse 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Judges chapter 17, verse 6 says, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Have you heard this, this statement, that's my truth? God help us. Well, that's his truth. No. I'm sorry to break it to you. You don't get to have your own no, sir. truth. You don't get to create your own way. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. As long as you're doing what's right in your own eyes, you are as wrong as that big old three-foot clock on my wall at home that has no batteries in it. It's right twice a day. You ain't even right that much. If you're walking in your own way. See, the, the idea that we have the power to direct our own steps, that we somehow are smart enough, wise enough to, to figure this thing out, it's the biggest lie ever told. One of my favorite shows on television, it's so old, it's black and white. Sometimes I think life was better when it was black and white. And TV was black and white. I'm, I'm about to the place that if it's a black and white TV show, I figure it's family friendly. Pretty much. But I love this one episode where Opie gets in trouble and Barney comes to his defense. And he says, Andy, you know you should just let Opie decide for himself. <laughs> Andy says, no, I'm afraid it don't work that way. You can't let a young'un decide for himself. 
He'll grab the first flashy thing with shiny ribbons on it. Then when he finds out there's a hook in it, it's already too late. Wrong ideas come packaged with so much glitter that it's hard to convince them that other things might be better in the long run. All a parent can do is say, wait. Don't you hate it when God says, wait? Oh, come on. I thought you had a better answer than wait. There's a hundred answers you could have given me without saying, wait. Oh. How many of you don't like to wait? Raise your hand, Paula. I nodded. I got you. I had my hand up. I was saying. <laughs> but as a parent, you tell that little one, you need to wait and trust me. I have your best interest at heart, even though right now you think I'm being mean, evil, ugly, Bad. You can't get it. You don't get it, but you will get it. Someday you'll understand. A child left to himself will bring his mother to shame. Somebody has to step up and be the adult, the authority. Your children are not your buddies and your pals and your friends. You can get friends. You can get buddies and you can get pals. Don't pick on your children. If nobody else will be your friend, don't, Lord, don't punish your children and make them be your friend. <laughs> nobody else can get along with you. I don't know why you would abuse your child in such a way. <laughs> Easy. Just kidding. Just kidding. Make some friends Amen. and be a parent. Be a grown-up to your children. Thus, teaching them the ways of the Lord, that there is a right way, there is an order, there is an authority, and we are obedient to him. Be an example of obedience to the Lord and they will follow you, and it will be well with you and your children after you. Amen? Stand with me. Just to recap all of this, all power is given to the sovereign God. If you obey his commands, it will be well with you and your children. It is our commission to baptize all nations. It is our commission to teach all nations. And the Lord closes out Matthew 28, 19. I am with you. I am with you. I don't know how to make a disciple. I am with you. He says, you don't know how to make a disciple. Come on and let me make a disciple with you. you. You don't know how to teach a Bible study. Come on, let me teach a Bible study with you. You don't know how to lead a home group. Let me do it with you. You don't know how to invite somebody to 242. Let me do it with you. Amen? The sovereign God of the universe wants preeminence over our free will. He will reign over all the earth. I said, He will reign over all the earth. He will reign over all the earth. Amen. We're waiting on Him to reign over all the earth. He's waiting on us to let Him reign over our will. It's just that simple. I hate to break it down so at such an easy level, but that's exactly how it is. He wants to reign over you and me. He wants a church, a people in full surrender.
all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely surrender all don't know him today, I'm opening this altar up one more time. Would you come and just say, Lord, I surrender. I haven't given my heart fully to you. I've been holding back something. What are you holding back? What is that one thing that you say, God, I'll do anything but. I'll live for you but. I'll serve you but. What is that one thing? Today's the day. Obey all of his commandments. Give him all of your heart. Give him full surrender today. I surrender all. Sing it out, the prayer. I surrender. Is there anything keeping you from the revival? Anything stopping you? Anything that would cause you to miss? What God is doing. Oh, I promise you it's not worth it. You want a revival in your heart? You want an outpouring in your life? You want to make disciples? Just simply obey. Simply say, God, I'm yours. God, I don't want to miss what you're doing in this hour. I don't want to be on the wrong side of history. I want to be a part of this great move. Oh, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every heart that's come into this room today, God. I want you, Lord, to pour out your spirit in a fresh and new way. I thank you for every moment we've had in your presence. I thank you for every miracle that we've seen in this room. And the greatest miracle of all is that heart and that soul right now that is being touched by your presence, that life that is being transformed right now by the glorious, miraculous power of your saving and cleansing blood. I thank you, Jesus, that somebody today is saying yes, yes. I've said no long enough. I'm saying yes today. Thank you, God, for that heart cleansed, healed, and made whole by your blood, by your power. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you said yes to the Lord in some way today, something touched your heart would you raise your hand there's one two come on down that's it come on down yes 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 won't you come to the front come on down that's it that's it they're coming That's it. 
to see a marked difference in your life and let your faith arise as God is moving in him in this place and in you if you want to sign up for pathways you can just grab a second time card and 
put your information on there and down at the bottom just write pathways and we'll make sure you get on the list for the next class if you raised your hand and made a decision for the Lord today please fill out one of those cards and let us know that you want to be disciple that you are following Jesus we also have baptism books if you haven't been water baptized you need to obey that commandment that is one of the first and great steps toward knowing Jesus in a full and powerful way and we have a card you can sign up today for water baptism at four o'clock today we invite all of you to come back if you're a tithe paying regular attending member of the river you are welcome at our business meeting 18 and older you can vote in the business meeting today will be an informative meeting there won't be any resolutions or anything on the table but we would invite you to come be informed this was an exciting year 22 and 23 is going to be even greater amen we thank you for watching us online those of you at home we praise god for those of you that have been shut in that are back in the house today i saw tom and diane geisinger back there today wow hallelujah you guys we love you she's a walking miracle that's for sure and we bless you we love you be sure to Congratulate Bill and Barb today on their 50 years and love on the new families that are here today. Thank you, Brad. My friend Brad came to visit today. Thank you, Brad, for coming. We love you, and we will see you at 4 o'clock. God bless you.